Hi, this is Jeff, lead developer and co-founder of Impress Interactive, and I'd like to share with you a demonstration video of our latest app, Simply Impress. In this video, though, I'm going to focus on developer aspects of how the app was designed and constructed. If you happen to be watching this video as a user of Simply Impress, you'll still find quite a few examples of how to use the app, but most of the dialogue might be difficult to follow if you aren't familiar with some of the software and technical terms I'll be discussing. Simply Impress is a design tool that offers easy creation of typographic and image content, with a focus on creating letterpress-inspired effects and impressions. The inspiration for Simply Impress came about in part from our first letterpress design app, Letter Impress. Letter Impress is an app offered on both iPad and Mac desktop that captures the traditional creative process of letterpress. Following as closely as possible to the real-world process, you pick and lock up wood type from a digital collection created directly from real physical typesets, inking a press with a specific color, running your chosen paper through the press to make an impression, and then repeating this process with new ink and different galley trays of layout when you want to apply multiple impressions. While Letter Impress offers users the unique experience of rethinking and imagining how they create type and design content in a traditional classic setting, along with its own unique limits and constraints, we wanted to also offer users an app that allows them to focus on the final letterpress results and less on mirroring the exact traditional process. And this is where Simply Impress comes in. Simply Impress is a cross-platform app available on both desktop and mobile that allows you to use any fonts installed on your device along with in-app letterpress fonts we provide and mix these with any images you want to import, applying letterpress effects and offering various paper options with high resolution output. Simply Impress was built using Adobe Air technology, in particular Stage 3D hardware acceleration, using both the Starling and Feathers ActionScript libraries. As I go through this video, I'll be calling out specific Stage 3D, Starling, and Feathers related concepts and classes that we use to build this app. So let me launch the app and first talk a bit about its overall layout and structure. As a design app, and also one that we wanted from the start to work well on both desktop and mobile, one of our main goals was to try and come up with a common single UI that stayed as out of the way as much as possible, not detracting from the main design content a user would want to focus on with the screen, and also allow a user, on even a small screen mobile device, to edit, modify, and see their design clearly. So what we have in the app is a main toolbar that lives horizontally at the bottom of the window. As the window resizes, it gets bigger or smaller, more of the toolbar comes into view. You also notice that the scroll bar has actually been customized to act as a little mini navigation area. Many icons show what's currently visible on the screen, and it's also much larger than a typical scroll bar. Both on desktop and mobile, you can actually touch directly in the scroll bar area to quickly jump to one side of the screen or another, especially in a sort of tall or portrait or landscape mode on a mobile device. You also notice that the color scheme is fairly simple with black and white and grays with just a splash of blue to show selection or highlight. This is all done with feather skinning where I've taken a minimal approach of actually using semi-transparent backgrounds for most of the tool panels. This actually allows the user to see most of the content in the design area even while they might have a tool panel up and are scrolling through content, making selection changes and still seeing that effect happen behind the panel that's open. Next, I'm going to just jump right in and start creating something with the app. And as I go along, I'll try and point out specific features of Starling and Feathers that we are making use of in the app. I'll probably go fairly quickly with the screens in some spots, since you can just pause, rewind, and repeat areas again that go by too quickly for you. So working from left to right in the toolbar, one of the first things you might want to do is set a page size, portrait or landscape mode. You can also set a background texture. You can also choose transparent since uh, Simply Impress exports all the designs in a ping format. You can then export that and then use that with another application. You'll notice the use of a feathers horizontal list control here to show paper choices, as well as animation with startling tweening whenever a tool panel comes in and out of play. A nice smooth alpha transition occurs. The next most common thing you want to do is enter some type. So pressing the keyboard action brings up a feathers text input control. You notice it's centered on the top, so that as the window gets larger or smaller and on mobile devices, the soft keyboard will show up below. Here is where you can actually enter text and you edit it, and hitting the plus button will add the text to the design. 
you can actually choose to select text, make changes to that text up here, and modify it within the design. I'm going to go ahead and modify this text to say simply impress. Modify it, move it out of the way. This text input control also allows you to type multi-line text. So I can type created, hit the return key, and then add this to the design. These other controls that you see here allow you to actually specify a locale or a language with the text, as well as left, right to left, or vertical text. The reason for this is that actually Simply Impress uses the text layout framework to render all of its text. And this will actually allows you to support better control with right to left languages or East Asian languages that actually want to display vertical text and render that correctly, ideographically. So this type looks a little boring, so we can spruce it up a bit using the font panel. It shows all the fonts that are installed on your device, as well as some MPI fonts that we've designed based off wood type that is included with the desktop and available for in-app purchase on the mobile devices. So by simply selecting the text, it shows that it's currently Helvetica. Let's try changing this to one of the MPI fonts. And with this guy, let's make it uh, bold. Now there are a couple ways to resize this. On the desktop, I can hold down the Option key and I get a scale cursor. It allows me to scale it in resize as well as showing me an overlay indicator what this, the current point size is. I can also go into the toolbar and use a scale slider, which does the same thing. Now, one of the other benefits of using the text layout framework is that we can actually do some other advanced controls. Here I can bring up a tracking and line height that allows me to actually adjust in real time the, sp the spacing between characters. Obviously, I can center it. And if I were actually on a multi-line text like this, I can actually adjust the line height. Now you also notice when I'm moving these objects around, you see little guide bars that come and they actually snap to in position. Simply Impress supports snapping and aligning objects on their left, right, tops, or bottom. It will also align to the center, both vertically and horizontally. But in addition to that, because we're using the text layout framework, one of the nice features of that is I can capture the baselines of text. So if I were to copy and paste this, you can see that as I'm moving these around, there's also a snap to between the different baselines of this text. So this created width here is aligning and snapping to based on the baseline. If I drag this created with this width, you can see that it's snapping on the baseline. You also notice that when I select an object, the handles appear showing selection. I can also get uh, hover rollover effects. Obviously, I can multi-select multiple objects moving around at the same time. These uh, handles and borders are all drawn with quads, very simple and effective with quad batching. You also notice that one of these shows with a little extra white indicator. This is actually showing what's called the anchor. The anchor is actually an anchor whenever you resize or modify the object, that stays in place. So you notice when I was resizing this, that that position where the anchor occurs stays in place and everything scales based on the center. Let's say you maybe you want to modify this and actually have this um, scale keeping the top in position. You can actually open up the anchor tool, which in this case is actually brings up another sort of special mode in which you can actually do exclusive editing with common transformations, which I'll show a little later. And especially on mobile, this is handy so you, that you can do one touch scaling rotation and movement. But here I'm just going to set the anchor point to be the top. And so now when I go and I select this and try to scale it, you notice that that is the new anchor. And so when it scales, it scales based on the top center. This can be really handy to do instead of trying to constantly move objects around if you know you're sort of planning on having this text be sort of at the top and not the center. And you want to just adjust it just a little bit. All right, so this content's still looking a little plain. So let's take it to the next level by applying some impression textures, color, and some extra effects. So let's bring up the impression panel, another feathers list control. Um, in this case, you can see that I'm currently selecting a solid look. I can pick wood grains, and it'll instantly change that effect. 
if I keep a specific impression and I just continually click on it, you'll see that it'll randomly generate a new offset so I can pick exactly the look that I like. I'm going to go down here and pick this distress look until I get something that I like. Then I'll select on the created width and uh, maybe give it just a slightly different sort of vintage look. Next I'm going to go and change some colors here. Here we pull up the color panel. You see that you can actually modify things with sliders to get a nice effect. There's also some presets that you can instantly choose with. If you're modifying the color and you find a color or a preset that you want to save into the presets, here we can actually use a feature. This is actually using Feather's drag and drop. So here I've got a drag source, and as soon as I let go of that, you see that these guys highlight as drop targets. And I also am watching when the target is over them so that I can give the user some indication if they were to let go that would change that color. So it's a really nice use of Feather's drag and drop, and it's really easy to do as well. So besides changing the base color, we can also play a little bit with the opacity, fading things in and out as needed. And we can also do some extra effects, things such as inverting, and if we wanted to, flipping them. Additionally, we can add extra padding. So again, you can notice that because Simply Impress is anchored at the top, I can apply padding but still keep it anchored at the top. Okay, so let's add some art to this design. I can choose the toolbar menu to import art, or I can use the file menu for the desktop. Let's choose the Starling logo. You'll notice that it imports in its full transparency in RGB color. I can scale, I can rotate, and I can even hold the shift key down and do fixed rotation as well. But I don't have to keep it in its original RGB color. I can also come into the impressions, apply an impression, and even pick a color. And all the other same effects as far as inversion or adding, padding works as well. I can select this image and also copy and paste a new copy. Come into here and do a flip. Hold the shift key down and rotate it. So just to speed things along, I went ahead and finished off adding some final text to this design and I'm ready to save it. Simply Impress allows you to save all your designs in a portfolio. Here you see we have a vertical scroll list. Um, and then within each one, you can transition into each folder and see a set of designs that you've saved and organized into each folder. Here, Simply Impress ships with a couple of samples and clip art, but you can go ahead and save your own. So I'm going to open up the demos and do add. And you'll see that it Thumbnails generated and the design is saved within those demos. I can load that or I can go into samples and I can double click and load this design. Or I can go right back into my demos and refresh and bring back the design I'm working on. When I'm ready to export my design, it's as simple as going into the toolbar under export or through the file menu on the desktop, choosing the resolution that I want to save the file as. And then this brings up a dialog to save. On the mobile device, it'll actually save it directly in your photo album. You see there's a modal session as it saves. And if we go into the file system, we'll see that the design is there. So after saving the design in all three resolutions, I've gone ahead and opened them up into preview, zoomed into a small section of the design. And you can see from left to right, as the higher resolution you go, the smoother the edges on your type, as well as the higher resolution on each of the individual impressions. You also notice that the impression offsets, the places in which you've chose to keep the impression, is consistent across all the resolutions. We're also able to generate the 288 uh, resolution on even mobile devices 
because all of the effects and all of the rendering that you see, even though it's on screen with textures in Stage 3D, that's all first done all behind the scenes with bitmap data. So we're not constrained to the texture limits on an actual device. We're only limited by the amount of memory and the size of the bitmap data that we're actually able to handle on the mobile devices. It's only then at the very end that we then limit the actual texture sizes that are used on screen when you see a preview of the design. I'd like to finish off the demo by running the app in a mobile environment and pointing out a couple of features that exist in the app only on the mobile devices. So here we're going to start up on an iPhone size screen. You'll see that on startup it uses a native launch image, then translates into a flash native overlay with initialization, and then when the stage 3D is completely finished behind the scenes, we hide the native stage to have a nice clean startup. Here you see in portrait mode we have the scroll bar. Again, the user, even on a touch display, can click or instantly jump to another section, or even on a touch display they can swipe directly on the toolbar as you might expect. If we rotate the device, you see that it works as well, as well as expanding out the visible layout of the toolbar. But again, everything still works just like on the desktop, fitting just barely into the vertical display as well for portrait mode. Here we have the app launching on a tablet-sized iPad display. Again, the native launch image transitioning to a native stage, and then when complete, we show the stage 3D content behind the scenes. On the iPad and tablet sizes, you've got wider range and portrait mode for the toolbar and icons. And when you rotate in landscape mode, if all the tools fit, the scroll bar animates out since there's no need for the scroll bar since all of your content is visible. Rotating back into portrait slides it back up so that it's visible. Since we're on a mobile device, there's no menu items for common actions like cut, copy, paste. So here we use extensive use of Feather's callouts select an object you get a call out for cut copy paste as well as some other transformation functions send back send forward through nested callouts click deselects the object if i click in the background you even have a call out for select all so since we're on a touch device you might expect you can click on objects and use common gestures to move them around use two finger gestures to rotate but you can also use one finger gestures through a special transformation mode. If you click on the anchor tool, you'll see that the bottom toolbar disappears and a special exclusive mode for doing common transformations like moving, scaling, even cropping, and padding. So here I can set scale and just with a single touch, I can actually scale and resize or switch to rotation and rotate with a single touch. This is a nice feature, especially for accessibility in case a user wants to actually only use one finger. You can even click on this to toggle between rotate or fixed mode so that your rotations are now limited to fixed rotations. You might also notice that when we were scaling this text, we only saw a preview rect showing how big the actual final text would be once we let go. This again can be done because we're doing all of our rendering and impression effects in the background with bitmap data. So here on a mobile device, we can actually avoid having to render a new texture, uploading it and repeating that process, but still give the user some real-time feedback of exactly how big this text is going to be when they scale it. So when we're done making changes to the design and we want to export it, we just go right into the Export menu, hit the Save, in this case, save into the photo album. You see a quick modal session as it saves it. If we go check the Photos app, we see that it was exported. So that was just a partial view of all the features in Simply Impress, but I do hope it gives you a reasonable sense of what you can do with the app and also what sort of cross-platform apps are possible using Stage 3D with Starling and Feathers. Thanks for watching.